Between the time when the ocean drank Atlantis and the rise of the sons of Arius, there was an age undreamed of. And on to this, Ona, destined to bear the jeweled crown of Aquilonia upon a troubled brow. It is I, his chronicler, who alone can tell thee of this saga. Let me tell you of the days of high adventure. <coughs> I love this shit. Yeah. When I listen to this, I go through my werewolf transformation. You guys gotta Google this movie, American Werewolf in London. It's got the best graphic representation of a werewolf transformation you will ever see. I believe it was uh, Morton Downey Jr. dude, he played the fucking American werewolf. He's a beast, bro. He just goes through this transformation to this music, bro. <clears throat> it's not for the faint of heart. You little bitch boy, it'll scare ya. Just warning ya. Parental advisory, bitch boy advisory. I'm an OG silverback, but I transform into a werewolf on a woman's vagina, big homie. Fuck around, man. I tear that shit up. I represent the country, the United States, and the planet. you guys to get in touch with your inner animal and become the beast you were meant to be, not worried about what other people think, and kowtow to the mores of a gynocentric led fucking society that's grooming men to be bitches and beta male bitch boys. Hey guys, today I have a tale of glory and of victory where I'm going to share with you the real truth about steroids, it comes down to knowledge of nutrition and training. That's the whole key. This is this is number 10 in the 10 video series on the real truth about steroids and how I'm going to teach you to use them safely. And what it comes down to, guys, is three things. Your mindset your understanding of nutrition and your understanding of training which covers kinesiology and physiology guys I wanna this is the this is the last video of the 10 part series so I'm gonna cover a lot of topics and I got um, I got three bonus videos lined up for you guys because it's a lot of information if you've been taking notes and googling by now you should be a motherfucking PhD and how to use steroids properly. So, 
Guys, I want you to understand one thing and one thing only. Hmm. I have the ability through NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, to do a thing that's called modeling. And I had did this early on. I Just so you know, guys, I, um, I studied sales training under Anthony Robbins, man, because uh, as a consultant, you have to sell your services to big corporations, multi-million dollar corporations, Fortune 500 and Fortune 100 corporations. So they're not just going to give their money to anybody. So you got to be able to sell and market. And I find that those skills also transfer over into pick up or seducing women. That's why I'm so good at it. Plus, I'm a beast the way I live my life. I'm congruent, man, with being a modern day warrior scholar. You got to find your passion, guys. And I hope that listening to me, you are finding a passion. I don't want you to be uh, fucking clones of OG Silverback. I want you to be your own inner animal. Some guys are wolves. Some guys are dogs, some guys are werewolves, some guys are bears, some guys are lions, some guys are tigers. You gotta find your own inner animal, man, that fits your personality. I like OG Silverback because when you look at OG Silverback Gorillas, when you look at a Silverback Gorilla, the only way the alpha male of the pack is no longer the alpha male, one of the younger bucks have to kill him. And let me tell you something, guys, I'm hard to kill. So when it comes down to in this, uh, Tenth and final video is you got to find a mentor, dude. You got to find somebody that you, first of all, respect, bro. Respect is <clears throat> is not given, it's earned, man. And whether I'm your mentor or you find anybody, you got to find a person that you respect because of their knowledge and what you're looking to attain. Whether you want to be a millionaire, you want to be a professional athlete, you want to be a porn star, you want to be a rapper, you want to be a country and western singer, whatever it is you want to be an actor, what you got to do guys is you got to find somebody who's already successful doing it and just model what they do, it's so simple, Americans make it so fucking hard, all you got to do man, it's called, uh, it's called imitation, imitation is the best form of flattery man, you just copy another dude man, the same thing in pickup you. A lot of guys are so busy, man, like chasing women. But what I used to do early on when I was a fat bitch boy and my back was fucked up, I couldn't work out. I used to just go into venues like Starbucks or, or um, happy hour after work, um, you know, or festivals. And I would see like, I would see some hot girls there and I would see what kind of guys they were with. And I would study the guys. I would study how they carried themselves, how they talked, how they treated the women, right? I learned that from Carlos Zuma. So anyway, modeling is the fastest way to get to where you want to go because the person that you're modeling is already doing it. So all you got to do, dude, is copy and adapt. Remember that. You do exactly what he does. You dress like he dressed. You think like he thinks. You walk like he walks. You talk like you eat how he eats. You sleep how he sleeps. Then once you are successful, he'll put you on the fast track to success. Then you can reverse engineer and be like, well, I don't like the way he wears Stacey Adams. I'm going to wear some Stetson. Or I don't like the way he wears uh, a tower. A I'm going to wear a Rolex. You know, then you can start nitpicking. But a lot of guys try to troubleshoot on the way to success. No, just mirror it. So the reason I'm telling you this, guys, man, back in the 60s and 70s, man, Arnold has such an impact, dude. On the United States of America, the men of America, bro. That it was it was life changing, man. So I latched on to Arnold as my mentor and role model, and I've had nothing but positive successes in my life. Starting at fourteen, when I got his um, his bodybuilding course and went over nutritional aspects, training, recuperation. And the mindset, dude. Arnold taught me to visualize my goals. Arnold taught me to stay focused on my goals. Arnold taught me to see myself as a winner. Arnold taught me how to eat my meals every three hours, what to eat. Arnold taught me how to rest properly if I could take naps in the middle of the day. You know, Arnold taught me how to train until you just fucking pass out. And as I've shared with you guys through this video series, I went from being 14 five foot six hundred and thirty eight pounds to being fourteen by the end of the summer. This was over the summer guys. 
summer vacation. I went to be a 14, 5, 10, 160 pounds. And let me tell you something, man. It was all muscle, so when I got back to school, not only were girls licking my balls and sucking my cock, dudes was bound down to me, and dudes was apologizing, paying me money, like, hey, little dude, I remember little dude, I used to beat you up, little dude, don't hurt me, little dude, because now I'm a big dude, but they remember I was a little dude. So the point I'm making is I so believed in what Arnold was saying. I had so much faith. I had blind faith, man, and that's what you got to do, man. Like it says in the Bible, it says you have to... You have to have the faith of a little child, man. Because little kids are ignorant. And they don't know any better, so they follow your instructions. And that sometimes, dude, I think guys are too smart for their own good. Like, you always got to be analyzing shit and questioning shit and, 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 and fucking trying to, you know, unravel the mysteries of shit and try to figure stuff out, man. Sometimes you just got to do. You got to trust and do. So that was my experience with Arnold at 14, you know, when I went to... Uh, Youth Authority Prison, man. And uh, I just kept his advice in my head about how to train and how to eat. And so when I left Youth Authority Prison at 17, I did a year in there from 16 to 17. I came out at 180 pounds, man. You got to remember one thing. When you're growing up in the hood, man, um, and I was, uh, I, was, I was 5'10", I think I came out at 5'11", man. Dude, it's all muscle, man. There was no fat, bro. And I was strong as fuck, dude. And I could run and everything, you know. And then I came out and got my leg broke. So then when I joined the military bureau with their training, what I'm trying to say to you is uh, Arnold in his book, The Education of a Body Better, which I have the links here, he had a full mastery of nutrition. See, you guys, when you, when you look up to your idols or whatever you call your... The people you look up to, your stars, man. You're just looking at one aspect of them. But you got to understand, there's an educational aspect that goes with their success. Whether it's the rapper's understanding of lyrics and how to make them rhyme, or it's the musician's understanding of the, the musical is digital interface, or the football player's understanding of how to grab the ball um, where the laces are. Or a soccer player's understanding, or a wrestler's understanding. There's a there's a there's a mental aspect. So when I read Arnold's book, you know Arnold, um, like I told you, he started hanging out with doctors when he's 16. But you got to remember also to pay his way. Arnold used to work in the gym, bro, and he was a personal trainer. And so I said, if it's good enough for Arnold, it's good enough for me. So as a personal trainer, like Arnold, really understood nutrition and training, and kinesiology and physiology. And biology, right? You know, hanging out with the doctors. So, what that did was while I was in the military and I was being trained by these uh, strength and conditioning specialists, I used to ask them about, even though I had Arnold's bodybuilding um, course, this is what I'm trying to uh, instill in you guys. Yeah, that's the right word. Even if you have a mentor or a leader, um, it's good to research what they're telling you bro like never just take anything as is all I'm saying is I think sometimes you guys have paralysis to analysis like you over examine shit but I'm saying you just can just check in just to make sure what they're telling you is right that's all I'm saying so I already had Arnold's knowledge from his bodybuilding course but as I had the strength and conditioning coaches in the military training me on the proper reps and the proper speed of a rep and the velocity and how to eat, man. I was really understanding. They, they gave me, they told me books to read and everything and all that. And as I had shared with you guys while I was in the military, I became one of the top personal trainers, man, because I was like always trying to be like Arnold. So Arnold was a personal trainer. As I was one of these powerlifting and bodybuilding shows. And what it, what it, I wanted to, I'm going to explain to you in a video how it went, guys. So. When I got into the military, I was boxing and wrestling and all martial arts. I got tired of boxing and the wrestling condition was no fucking joke. I felt it was taken away from my game, so I really started focusing on the weights. And at that time, my physique, even though it was great for high school, right, it wasn't like award-winning, like 
fucking for a bodybuilder. I was more like I had an athletic physique, right? You could tell I was an athlete, had muscles, just fucking girls. But the military, um, their biggest thing was um, powerlifting, dude, and weightlifting. So they trained me to be a weightlifter, which is different from a powerlifter. And I think I'm going to share this with you as I get into my three bonus videos. But the whole thing when you're a weightlifter, you have to understand speed plus power plus flex flexibility plus force equals strength. See, weightlifting is not just like powerlifting is about pure raw power. Weightlifting is about strength, coordination, flexibility, and movement and speed. In essence, what you're doing is you're squatting down, you're gripping the bar, an overhand hang type of a lift, and you're ripping it up as fast as you can, exploding up while you drop down to a full squat position, flipping the weight, whether you're doing a snatch or a clean and jerk press. And that has some athleticism to it. So they trained me as a weightlifter, dude. And uh, I couldn't, I couldn't get the poundages up just because I'm a tall guy. Most weightlifters aren't like tall like me. Because what happened is when I got into the military, I went from 180 to 198. And the guys in the 198 class, man, they were like lifting over your head, man, like fucking 300, 400 pounds, man, and the fucking snatch and clean and jerk, dude. I, I couldn't do it. So then what they did is they switched me over to powerlifting because of the straight power moves, man. Like I just, my strength just took off. I just think I didn't have the the hip and the knee and the shoulder joint flexibility for weightlifting. But the point I'm trying to make to you guys is the foundation of my training was weightlifting. And the stretching and the training and the velocity, the speed of the lift was something that changed my life. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. And the way that they had me eat, because they said I was too skinny, man. I was too, I was too skinny at uh, six foot, 198 pounds. They wanted me to get up to the 220s, bro. So what they had me on the eating schedule was I would get up in the morning. First thing I would do is I'd take a protein drink. Back then they didn't have whey protein. They just had milk and egg protein. So I would drink that with whole milk and take some vitamins. And then, uh, you know, of course, in the military, you still got to run and do your, your uh, calisthenics and shit. So I did that after a shower, go to the chow hall. Then I would have, you know, the same thing, like some shit on the shango, which is basically ground beef and the gravy poured over some toast and some scrambled eggs with some potatoes, man. With some orange juice and some fruit, ate that. And then uh, three hours later, I'd have another protein shake. And then I would have lunch. The military lunches is always the same, man. Unless you're in the field, you're going to have a salad with some vegetables, some meat, and some bread. You know, the staples, right? The food pyramid. Ate that three hours later. Had a milk and egg protein shake with um, whole milk. Then I had dinner, which is another uh, salad, vegetables, and some meat. But, you know, bread and potatoes. And then, dude, you know, then it was go time to go train fucking hard, man. So then after train hard, bro, I'd exhaust all my glycogen stores and everything. You stretch after training, bro. You stretch before training and most importantly after training, bro. And so then uh, prior to going to bed, you get another uh, milk and egg uh, protein shake. But what they want you to do is they want you to put, like, um, fruit and peanut butter. Like, I would put bananas and peanut butter in it with some oatmeal, some of that, because their philosophy was, when well, you're a skinny little bitch boy. And I wasn't, like, skinny, but for their standards, they wanted me to be in the 220-pound class. They needed to bulk me up with some muscle, so they felt like I could, I could, um, I could afford to put on some adipose tissue, some fat. So they had me do the peanut butter with bananas and oatmeal in the, pro the milk and egg protein shake, so that while I'm sleeping at night, my body would be getting the nutrients, and boy, let me tell you something, that shit worked, man. So over a period of, uh, I would say about a year, I got up to the 220 pound class, and that's when my life changed, dude, because uh, I had told you guys in the, in the original video, at like 180 pounds, man, I think I was benching like, uh, <laughs> I think I was benching like, uh, 185 man I think I was squatting like 
225 and a deadlift at like 315. But then after that, dude, just because of the training that they had me doing and my understanding of nutrition and training, like what the military does is when you train, they have you put your mind into the muscle. And I think that's another big differentiator. So it's not just the knowledge of the training, it's the knowledge in your head, like you're consciously lifting the weight, you are consciously thinking speed, you're consciously thinking acceleration. And that's where the weightlifting helped my powerlifting because what you gotta understand, if you watch weightlifters, and I want you guys to to, uh, to Google some you know, US Olympic weightlifting or Russian or German or whatever, or even Chinese. And just the whole training session, and watch when they warm up with the, um, with the light weights. They still have an explosiveness because what they're doing is they're prepping the muscle to contract at a high speed, right? It's all about explosion, speed, explosion, speed. Like they'll explode off the ground, right? If you're watching an Olympic lifter, man, if it wasn't for the heaviness of the weight, with the explosion that they're having, they would explode off the ground. So what I want you guys to understand is um, that mentality really went well with my athletic background because I understood when I'm doing track and field and I'm sprinting, when I come out of the blocks, I'm exploding. When I am going over a hurdle, I'm exploding. When I am doing the um, the high jump, I'm exploding, or the pole vault, right? And when you're playing football, you come off the line, you explode, right? When you swing the baseball bat for the ball, you explode, right? When you wrestle, you explode. So it really went hand in hand and I'm sharing this with you because a lot of guys that are looking to get into steroids, whether they're in their teens or early 20s or even in their 30s, a lot of you guys don't have an athletic background where you understand kinesiology and physiology and, 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 and the synergy of your body working in unison, exploding, right? The explosion, right? No, because I see a lot of guys, they, they go into this philosophy of, uh, and I, I, I laugh to myself because you see them in the, in the gym, and they're doing these super concentrated uh, isolation exercises where they're doing the rep really, really slow for the contraction and they're squeezing it. Perfect form. They're going back really, really slow. And they think that they're doing some shit called time under tension. That's not what that is. Time under tension is like when you can uh, say to yourself, you got 225 pounds on the bench and you want to see how many reps you can do in a matter of a minute. That's time under tension, dude, because explosion, explosion, contraction, explosion, contraction, explosion, contraction, explosion, contraction, right? And then you can mimic that when you're pumping on a girl. Like, you may only be able to pump her for five minutes, but you'll pump her with such velocity, she'll be remembering your name. So the point I'm making is, the real truth about steroids is, even before you embark on this journey, you got to really have an understanding of nutrition and training and how your body responds because look at it like this. When you take steroids, this is the pinnacle of your career or of your aspiration. I'm going to tell you the real truth about steroids, guys, that people don't tell you. Once you take steroids, your body will never be the same, man. Your endocrine system, your hormonal system, um, your, your hormones, um, your glands. Steroids, man, really alters your body, man. And this is the, 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 the key that people don't need, that need to understand. Is the average male secretes between 5 and 5 to 15 milligrams of testosterone from his testicles. So when you, when you start taking some Dianabol, you know, each tablet is 5 milligrams, right? So let's just say, for the sake of this argument, you're 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 kicking off 15 milligrams of uh, testosterone, so then you're taking five. <coughs> now you got 20 grams, dude. When you do the math, you know, 15. If 15 is a whole number, you add five to it. Now you got 20. Man, that's a 25 percent increase, man. And your testosterone output, dude. And so if you really have an understanding of training and fucking nutrition, like you understand the speed of how you're supposed to contract your muscle as a weightlifter. And understand this, guys. When you look at Arnold and, and Sergio Oliva and um, Reg Park 
and all those dudes from the past, the ones who really, the golden era of bodybuilding dude back in the 50s and 60s, those guys all came from a weightlifting background, bro. And if you look at the their muscle density compared to the bodybuilders today, which are just walking pharmaceuticals, fucking pharmaceutical company, bro. There's a big difference in the quality of the muscle, dude. The density of the muscle. Yeah, anybody can get freakishly huge. You pump enough drugs in your body, you end up like fucking Dallas Carver or fucking Rich Piana, right? Or Linda Nasser El Somebody. Or fry your fucking your fucking kidneys and shit like Flex Wheeler, bro. But when you look at the old school bodybuilders, man, who came from a weightlifting background, bro. That's what I'm talking about. You want the kind of muscle that stays with you. Like, those bodybuilders in the off-season, you didn't really see much different. Like, I, I will be honest with you. Like, I used to see some pictures of Arnold in the off-season. I'd be like, man, he's looking kind of small. But you could still tell he was a he was a bodybuilder. You could tell still he was Arnold, but he just wasn't his impressive self. And then later on in Arnold's career, he, he wasn't getting off the juice, man, because he was like, Mr. Olympian, he's guest posing and he's doing movies, he's doing all kind of stuff. But I'm talking about early on in his career when he just had the muscle density, the muscle maturity. That comes from heavy weightlifting, bro. So what I want to explain to you is when you you want to get a course in like pers personal training, and I would recommend the National National Training and Strength Association, the NTSA or something like that, and then there's a there's a couple others, but you want to take a course where it actually talks to you about the uh, the different uh, rep speeds, repetition speeds, velocity, force, speed, exertion, acceleration, and understand what that does to your muscles and joints and ligaments and your tendons and your fascia. The fascia is the sheath that covers your muscle, and there's five different muscle fibers, dude. Like. <coughs> There's fast twitch, there's slow twitch, there's medium twitch. There's long distance muscle, short distance muscle. You want to understand and, and hit a training range for all of those so you can get the biggest bang for your buck of exertion in the gym because when you really grow in bodybuilding and powerlifting and weightlifting, bro, where you really grow, even in an athletic performance, it's outside of the gym after you're training. What the training in the gym does, guys, is um, let's look at it from a molecular level. It breaks down the muscles so that they're open. They're, it tears the muscles so that they're open. Look at them like an open bamboo shoot. So that the high quality nutrients you put in your body can then go in there on the cellular level and have them overcompensate. That's what muscles do. So that's why, you know, before you even pop a Dianabol pill or Anavar, you want to really have a solid understanding of <clears throat> nutrition and training because then not only will you have maximized your genetic potential whatever that may be for you because like I said man you're supposed to change your training routine every 90 days I'm gonna go into that in my cycling video and this is how it works. You should change your you should change up your training routine every ninety days. So there's ninety days of off season training, ninety days of, of uh transitional training, ninety days of um prepping for competition training, and ninety days of competition training. And there's nutritional aspects that go with that as well. So once you take a personal training certification, I would take a couple of them. And you have a, a have a good understanding. You're doing the CrossFit like I recommended. You're playing a recreational sport, and you're also doing those um, warrior dashes. You'd be well on your way. So when you do your first cycle, dude, it may be the last cycle that you ever have to do because you're going to get such extraordinary results. Let's know you sell back that you're going to be famous, making money, doing your thing, and living your life without ruining your fucking health. Stay tuned for the next one. OG Silverback, out.